In this video we're going to look at some of the hardest functions questions you can get at GCSE and IGCSE, exactly the sort of thing you need if you're going for top grades in your exams. Here's the first one. We've got a function f defined by f of x equals 2x over x minus 2, and in part a we want to find the value of f of minus 2. So to do f of minus 2 we just replace x with minus 2 everywhere we see it, so we've got 2 times minus 2 on the top, and then minus 2 minus 2 on the bottom. That's minus 4 over minus 4, and that gives us the answer of 1. That's the output when we input minus 2 into that function. Part B asks what values of x we have to exclude from the domain. Well, if you think about the definition uh, 2x over x minus 2, the problem is in the denominator here. So we can't let that denominator be 0. It doesn't make sense. So when x minus 2 equals 0, we have a problem that would be when x is equal to 2. So we need to exclude x equals 2 from the domain. The domain means the set of inputs of the function uh, for this function to be uh, well defined. Otherwise, it breaks the function when I put in x equals 2. Now in part c, we want to work out f of f of x, simplifying our answer as much as possible. So f of f of x, that's a composition of functions. That means do f brackets uh, f of x like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the whole of f of x, which we know is 2x over x minus 2, and I'm putting that as the input to this function. So I'm going to replace x with 2x over x minus 2 everywhere I see it in the function definition. So I've got 2 times 2x over x minus 2 divided by 2x over x minus 2 uh, minus 2. Now, these sorts of expressions are very awkward when I've got fractions inside fractions. The easiest way to deal with this is to take the denominator of this inside fraction here, the x minus 2, and multiply top and bottom by it. So if I multiply the top of the fraction by x minus 2, right, that's going to cancel out this x minus 2 here. Now if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by x minus 2, I've got to be a little bit careful. right? So on the top, we can see I've just got 2 times 2x, which is 4x. But on the bottom, I've got x minus 2 multiplied by this fraction, which cancels out this part here. But then I've also got 2 times x minus 2. So I've got minus 2 times uh, x minus 2. So now I can just simplify the denominator. And I've got 2x minus 2x is going to cancel out. And I've got minus 2 times minus 2 is uh, plus 4. So I get 4x over 4, uh, which gives me x as the final answer. This means this function f is quite an interesting function because we could also say that f is self-inverse or f is equal to f inverse. It's its own inverse because you see when I put a value of x into the function and I get out f of x, I take that output and I put it back into the function, I just get back to x, so I get back to where I started. And that will work for any value. We could go back to our part a answer here. Remember we found that f of minus 2 is equal to 1. Now if I do f of 1, then I'm going to get 2 times 1 over 1 minus 2, which is 2 over minus 1, which is minus 2. So that takes me back to the number that I originally put in the function. And what we just showed in part c is that will always be the case for this function. If you apply the function twice, you get back to where you started. So here's another tough functions question. I've got two functions to find, this time f and g. And in part a, I want uh, f of g of 3. That's a composite function. So when you've got f g of 3 written like this, that means do f of g of 3. So as with all brackets, we work from the inside out. And we first do g of 3. So g of 3 would be 4 thirds, because it's 4 over 3. I'm just replacing the x with 3. And f of 4 thirds, I'm now going to put 4 thirds in place of x in the function f, so I get 3 times 4 thirds plus 5, and 3 times 4 thirds, the 3's just cancel out to give 4, so I've got 4 plus 5, which is equal to 9, is the answer to part a. To work out the inverse function, we've got two possible methods here. A standard method is to write something like y equals 3x plus 5, and then to swap the roles of x and y. So you could write x equals 3y plus 5, because in the inverse function, the inputs and the outputs are reversed. Input becomes output, output becomes input. So all I've got to do to find the inverse function here is to make y the subject. So I could write 3y is equal to uh, x minus 5, and then y is equal to x minus 5 over 3, and that would give us the inverse function here being f inverse of x 
is equal to x minus 5 over 3. You might also be able to write this down without doing such complicated working, because you can think of this as a function machine, where f of x takes the input x and multiplies it by 3, and then goes through this function machine and takes that and adds on 5, right? So whatever the input is, it multiplies it by 3 and adds 5. So to do the inverse function, we need to undo that function machine. We subtract 5, and then we divide by 3. And we have to undo the operations in the reverse order. Sometimes we call this the shoes and socks method because you put your socks on first and then your shoes on second. And to undo that, you take your shoes off first and then your socks off second. So we have to undo it in the opposite order to the way we apply the function in the first place. So you can see actually the function that subtracts 5 and then divides by 3. Well, to subtract 5, I just do x minus 5 and then I divide by 3 to get the f inverse of x is equal to x minus 5 over 3, and we can write that down without such complicated working. For the composite function f of g of x, similar to uh, part a here, but we've got to do this in general now, so I've got f of g of x, and g of x is 4 over x, so what I need to do now is to put 4 over x into the definition of f, so I get 3 times 4 over x, plus 5, 3 times 4 over x is 12 over x, and so I've got 12 over x plus 5 as the answer, and I can't make that any simpler, so we'll leave it like that. Now we're going to get on to the very hardest questions in a few seconds, but if you want more content like this, then do check out courses.mathsaurus.com. There are loads of free courses there that I've made to help you master maths at GCSE and A-level, as well as to get really good at maths challenges and competitions. So take a look at the link in the description and sign up now for free. So here's a really tough functions question, exactly the sort of thing you need to be getting if you want an 8 or a 9 at GCSE and IGCSE. So I've got f of x is x squared, g of x is equal to x minus 3. I want to solve the equation f of g of x is equal to g inverse of x. So let's deal with f of g of x first. Uh, f g of x is a composition of functions, so that means f of g of x with brackets in it uh, like this is exactly uh, the same. So g of x is equal to x minus 3, so I've got f of x minus 3, so I've got to replace x with x minus 3 in the definition of f, so this x here becomes x minus 3, and I get x minus 3 all squared there. For g inverse of x, that's a bit easier, because g of x is quite a simple function. g of x just subtracts 3 from the input x, so to undo that, to get the inverse, I would just add 3 onto the function. So without any fancy methods here, I can write down g inverse of x is equal to x plus 3. So now we need to solve this equation, and although it looks complicated, all I need to do now is replace these expressions with the ones that I've just worked out below. So f g of x is x minus 3 squared, and g inverse of x is equal to x plus 3. Now, these sorts of questions are harder because there are many steps to getting to the solution. You've got to know what to do next. We see here we've got a quadratic equation, and to solve this, we're going to multiply out the left-hand side, which is x minus 3 times uh, x minus 3 to begin with, and then we'll take it from there. So x minus x is x squared, minus 3x minus 3x gives us minus 6x, minus 3 times minus 3 gives us plus 9, just multiplying out all of the four pairs of terms in that expression, and that's equal to x plus 3. Now to solve a quadratic equation, here I'm going to do it by factorising, but to do that I need to first move all the uh, terms to the left hand side, so I'm going to subtract x and subtract 3 from each side, and that will give me x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 0, and now this is in a form that we can factorise. I'm looking for two numbers that add together to give minus 7 and multiply together to give 6 here, so I've got uh, x minus 6 times x minus 1 is equal to 0, and so to solve this equation we need to either make either x minus 6 equal to 0 or x minus 1 equal to 0, so we have either x equals 6 or x equals 1, and you can check that those two values do indeed satisfy this original equation we started with, and that is the solution to this equation. So that's how to solve some of the hardest functions problems at GCSE, and if you like this video, I think you'll like the one I've put on the screen right now as well.